Land Commission of the City of West Bend. It is Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. More than 24 hours in advance of this meeting, notice that the time, place, date, and subject matter of the meeting was posted in accordance to Wisconsin state statutes. John, can you please call the roll? Sure. Mr. Fisher? Here. Mr. Slower? Here. Uh, Mr. Marshall? Here. Uh, Alderman Spark? Here. Uh, Mayor Unger? Here. Uh, Mr. Alderman Sternig? Here. Uh, Mr. Schmidt uh, is absent, he's excused. Um, and uh, Mr. Schellenberg? Here. And uh, Mr. Winston? Here. Thank you. I invite you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. All right, we have several items on our agenda tonight. Um, some of them uh, uh, require a public hearing, and so we will start that in just a minute. Uh, but I'm gonna ask John if you would like to uh, please read off our first item of business. Oh, excuse me. We have minutes from our last meeting we need to approve first. Thank you, Jim. So our first action item tonight is the approval of our minutes of our regular meeting held on May 7th, 2024. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. And I, was that you, Paul? Thank you, Paul, second by Mike. Any comments, questions, corrections? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that carries. Now, John, please take us away. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the first item is a public hearing um, on the request of a recommendation to rezone approximately 3.26 acres of land located east of the intersection of Daisy Drive and Clearview Drive to add a PUD planned unit development overlay over the existing RS4 single family residential district to allow for the construction of 16 single family uh, developments. Uh, the tax key numbers are uh, indicated on the uh, agenda. Thank you. Jim, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a presentation on this item. Sure, thank you. Um, we have three related items with this PUD, so what I'd like to do is just brief the commission on both uh, the PUD overlay, the site plan, and then also the certified survey map to go with this. Um, so the applicant is requesting a um, zoning amendment for a PUD overlay. Um, th the development will consist of 16 um, single family units. Uh, the purpose of the PUD is to provide some design flexibility for the um, area out there. We have some environmental areas um, along with some other um, groundwater conditions and whatnot. Um, so the developer is requesting um, to create a three point uh, two six acre property. Um, the density would be about 4.9 units per acre, which meets the requirements of the 6.05 units per acre. Uh, the development will actually consist of a private cul-de-sac um, extending east off of Clearview Drive um, to serve the development. Uh, the utilities for this, the sewer and water, will also be um, private for that and will be extended from those public mains that we have um, adjacent to it. Uh, private sidewalk on the south side of the development will be um, included as part of this. Uh, stormwater management is also required um, for this and it has not been submitted at this time pending um, the submittal and prior to any approvals um, and issuance of permits, um, the stormwater plan will need to be required. Um, the site does have some um, issues with high groundwater. So a soil mitigation plan has been submitted for that to um, overcome those uh, design issues that we have uh, for that. Uh, the site plan does identify 64 uh, parking stalls, two of them in the garage of the units and then also two um, within the driveway which would meet the parking requirements under the, the zoning code for that. Um, the Site grades um, for the development have been generally designed to drain to various catch basins and also to rear yard swales. The water is then directed to a stormwater pond located on the far east end of the development. Um, landscaping plans have been provided for this. Um, staff did send review comments out to the developer about a week, a week and a half ago 
um, pending um, revisions for that. As part of that, we did ask for some additional landscaping throughout the site, um, especially on the west side and near the entrance of the development, and then also around the areas of the building to um, provide some more landscaping there throughout the site. Um, the architectural building elevations have been provided. Um, it's a two-story um, building. Uh, will consist of two types of vinyl siding, um, the horizontal and shake style sidings along with asphalt shingles. Um, the developer was proposing to vary the colors between sandstone, sage green, clay, and then slate blue um, for the, the various units, just varying the colors and not the um, building designs themselves. So staff did recommend um, that the developer go back and kind of redesign some of the building architecture to kind of provide some variations um, throughout the development. Um, and again, we have not received any revisions of those plans yet. Um, as for the, the site plan, or if, I'm sorry, for the lot itself, um, they are creating a 3.26 acre lot. Um, and that does meet the requirements of our, our planning requirements for that, along with the meeting the requirements of the underlying zoning of the RS4. Um, there are a few items that still need to be addressed as part of this, as part of the actual PUD portion. Um, we do require that the developer provide us documents for how they're gonna regulate the, essentially put in their covenants um, for how they're gonna regulate the PUD. Um, for either you know condo ownership type thing, and then also enforcements on you know how they're going to actually form the associations for this development. Um, if the plan commission finds uh, things to be in order, uh, we would recommend approval with conditions. Um, but again, that's um, pending the the uh, public hearing and the concerns that we may have. Um, plan commission may wish to. To do something different okay thank you Jim can I add something please yes please Max um, I will like to say that we did receive a stormwater management um, submission so um, we just finished a review we're putting comments together to send back to the applicant hopefully sometime later this week so I just wanted to give an update on that thanks Max okay We've heard a presentation from our city staff. Is there a presentation from anybody from the applicant side that would like to speak? Yeah, please. Okay. If you wouldn't mind, uh, state your name and, and, and who you're with. Thank you. Um, I'm Mackenzie Swartout. I'm with Parish Survey and Engineering. Um, I don't know if this is the best. I know there, this said three different agenda items, so I don't know how much to speak on the rezoning portion. Um, I guess just to reiterate that these are all single family homes um, that match up fairly well with the lots to the south there for like density. Um, we are still working on the details for the like, um, you know, HOA and private entity, those kind of things. Um, it is understood that all the utilities and everything will be private though. So we have made those changes. Um, we actually have made the revisions. I just didn't get them sent in in time for the staff to review them all before this meeting. Um, but I guess uh, rezoning wise, I don't have too many other comments, but I'm sure I'll be back up here once we get to the site plan review and everything. You know, we, we don't have a public hearing. There's no pr public hearing for the site plan or for the certified survey map portion. And so if there, if you do have more to share, I think now would be would oh, be a great time. Gotcha, okay. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess I don't really know what else to speak on it. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions from folks here that I could answer, but I, I do feel like Jim laid out the general concept well enough, so. I, and that's, that's great. And, okay. and I think what we'll do is we'll go into the public hearing portion of it. Um, maybe have some some discussion amongst the planning commission and then welcome you back after that <laughs> okay how, sounds how about great that? Okay. thank you very much very good thank you what I'll do now is I'll open the public hearing on this topic and so anybody wishing to address the planning commission um, now is your time um, I, I don't know if everyone in the crowd would like to speak tonight but there are several of you here um, 
please just be courteous to everybody in the crowd on a, on a beautiful Tuesday night here, maybe, maybe three minutes, uh, try to get your point across. Um, we absolutely want to hear from everybody who wishes to speak. Um, if someone uh, expresses something that, that you are in uh, complete support of, maybe just come to the mic and say that I, I agree with that previous person, you know, something like that. But um, we, we absolutely want to hear from everyone. We also don't want to be here until midnight. But uh, uh, let's be respectful. And again, you're addressing the plan commission. Uh, so anybody wishing to address on this topic, uh, the public hearing is now open. OK. Um, hi, Kate Barrett, Daisy Drive. Um, so I would, I'm like the second house in on Daisy Drive single family home, just so you can kind of like get your bearings on what I'm going to speak on. So I'm here to ask you to not change this from RS4 to this PUD development. Um, first of all, in my opinion, this is not a PUD. This is the definition of tract housing. Like if you look at this, you have 16 of exactly the same homes. And tract housing has been proven not to increase the value of the areas around it. It is a low cost way for a developer to come in, take a tract of land and to very low cost to the developer, build the exact same unit on every single spot. And what that does is it limits resale value of not only the properties that he's building, but all of us. In addition, this has been known <laughs> for decades, I don't know, 40, 50 years, that that's wetland in there. Anybody who's owned it, anybody that lives around it knows that's wetland. You can take a walk around our neighborhood and see all the sump pumps going crazy right now. It's wetland. It has always been zoned as single family. I bought my property on Daisy Drive knowing that that 32 acres was single family and being pro that that was single family and would be developed similar to the homes on, I don't know, Sunflower, Lily Creek, any of them with different architectural features, character, well-built homes with proper setbacks, proper um, space between the houses, decent yards for children to play. You know, West Bend calls itself Tree City. There's no way you're gonna get trees in here when these people can't even park on the road. And that's another issue with that, that they're not allowing, you can see written very small on here that there's no street parking allowed. Now, you're living in a fantasy world if you don't think they are gonna now park along Clearview and along Daisy, and you're gonna turn our corner into a parking lot. Whether it's the families that live there, or if they have company over, like does no one have company over? They're, and they can't park on their road, they're gonna come and park in that area, park in front of our homes where our children are playing and things. There's enough street congestion on Daisy Creek and Clearview that you don't need to add more high density housing. There, there's enough high density housing in West Bend. This RS4 tract of land could be developed properly and really be made into a beautiful area. And this is now the second time this developer has come and tried to change it from RS4. This isn't the first time we've been here. This is just a sneaky way around what we established a couple years ago when we filled the room and said, no, leave it as RS4. We have, we, when we all bought, it was RS4. And I don't think we should be punished for a developer that didn't do his research prior to buying the land. If he lacks the skill set to develop it as RS4, we shouldn't be punished for someone else's ineptitude. They should keep it as RS4 and develop it in the way that it's always been met. There are plans out there. I've lived there long enough that I know there are plans out there for an RS4 development. This is just a way around it. And again, when you build tract housing like this, it benefits no one but the developer. I and mean, let's be honest, and that's the developer's job, right, is to make the most money for himself. It's not necessarily to like benefit those around him because he doesn't live there or raise children there or pay taxes on the property there. So at that point, I think it should be left as RS4. Again, it, it is wetland. Yeah, it's wet over there. So why would you take subpar land put in subpar housing, and then negatively impact all of us that have lived there for years and paid taxes on our property for years only to devalue us by a new development. <laughs> uh, so I know you're trying to have us keep it short and sweet here, but I'm saying there's no, and they only even have a sidewalk on one side. We're all required to have sidewalk in front of our houses. They should be too. So your biggest, your biggest deal here is you're just trying to overdevelop a tract of land. If you developed it as single family, it would be perfect. 
it would and I you know in this market if you can't sell that land as single family homes you're doing something wrong right like come on so at the end of the day I'm asking you you know our taxes go up every year and I know the city takes more and more of our money every year I really hope you're willing to hear our voices tonight because this is unacceptable thank you thank you Matt Nershel, 2124 Creek Drive. I've been here so many times in the past about this stuff as, as you've developed that whole area. I think I'm on your, oh, that guy again list. Uh, so, but I'm gonna read some to you. Uh, the, the RS4, that's what it should stay. I agree with everything Kate said, but when you look up a PUD, the planned unit development overlay district is intended to provide flexibility in the design of planning projects to permit innovation in, in project design that incorporates open space and other amenities and to ensure compatibility of development with the surrounding urban area. You tell me where the open spaces and amenities are in this property. There's nothing, that would be like putting a park or something in there for everyone to use. Well, there was, there's, there's not, these, these properties have very little space. And compatibility, you've almost got two houses adjacent to the lots that, so everybody that lives along there is gonna have alternating like two houses going all the way down. You think that's gonna not affect their taxes, okay? Setbacks, when I put a porch on my house, I had had a 30 foot setback because of the street I live on. These people have 20 feet to the house. Now, and you look at the design, there's no porches on these. If somebody wants a porch on, what, what are you gonna have for a setback? You're gonna give them 15 feet? That's not right. It cost me a lot to put that, that deck on and I had, a, I had to follow your rules, RS4 rules. And this back here should be RS4. That's what we, that the, it's always been that. It always was intended to be that. Now this guy wants to come in and he wants to make the most bang for his butt, put a buck and put a whole bunch of houses in a small little area and say, there we go, no basements, that's fine. If somebody wants to buy a no basement house because of where you are, but you, know, you have very little space. In the backyard, you have to have five feet off. So if somebody wants to put a shed in the backyard, you got five foot setback. Now your, your shed's gonna be to the front door of your shed. It's been less than 15 feet away. If somebody wants to put a pool in or something like that, or is that not gonna be allowed? But a sidewalk on one side, we were told that all houses in West Bend, when they put our street in, had to have sidewalks. Because we said we didn't want to have sidewalks. We lived there all those years without sidewalks. And when they did the road, we said, no, we don't need it. You, know, you have to have it. So why, why do they not have to have sidewalks on both sides? I just don't understand. When you, when you look at the side, these things are, it says a lot, an RS4 a lot shall be minimum 7,200 square feet in area and shall be not less than 60 feet in width and lot, and, and lot size. Minimum width of the lot shall be 50 feet. So it does fit that. Okay, but it also says that your lot is supposed to your house, the maximum lot coverage of a principal and necessary building shall not exceed 35% of the lot. These houses are 32% of the lot. Okay, you're right there. You're right there. That's about all you can do with that place. And that's what we want to put in our backyard. No, we've always had RS4. We always knew there would be development there. And like Cade said, there was a plan. We saw it the last time we were here when the meeting was adjourned. That's something that of the original, I think it was when Knuth owned that property. There's been about four or five people that have owned that property. No, nobody's been able to do anything with it, right? So I don't know why somebody would buy this and try to cram all this stuff down our throats. RS4 is what it is. RS4 is what it should remain. Thank you. Thank you. Dale Sibella, 1311 Sunflower Avenue. I'm reading from the document. A total of 64 parking stalls are provided within the development, two stalls in the driveway, and two car garages. Adequate parking for each unit exists 
and satisfies parking requirements for a senior living development. Explain to me how three and four bedroom houses, two story, are senior living development. It's in your document. What are you doing? Yeah, that was a typo actually. That was brought to our attention. <laughs> when we wrote the memo, it was we used a template and it was over it was an oversight. It's for a single family. Okay, so, so our, you're gonna our put zoning sixteen code, families down a private road with one sidewalk that can't be parked on. Families. Really? Yeah, our zoning code requires for single family houses to have two parking stalls off -site or on site for each dwelling unit. So this meets the zoning code requirements under our, our residential zoning. Well, that may be, but we're gonna end up with an awful lot of cars parked on our street. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the plan commission? Please. Mary Ann Holzer, 1107 Clearview Drive. I agree with everything that's been said so far, but I have a few additional comments. And again, we, we don't oppose there being a development behind us. Nobody's opposed to that. We've all done our research. I've lived there for 30 years. Many of them have lived there longer than I have. And when I bought my property, I did my research, and I knew it was zoned SR4. So there is a plan. I have a copy of it. If any of you want to see the plan that Knuth submitted to the city prior to Diamond Holdings buying that property, and it was zoned SR4, and he submitted the plan for SR4 development. So there is no reason that it can't be developed as SR4. He bought that property knowing it was zoned SR4, and there's no reason he should be back here multiple times requesting that it be changed to other zoning requirements. And we've come in here multiple times now requesting that it not be changed. So we ask you to stand firm on what it was originally zoned for. That's all we're asking. We bought our properties zoned that way, knowing that's what would be developed back there. So for you to think that you can zone it for something other than that is very unfair to those of us who did our research and bought our properties based on that. In addition to the comments that were made about the green space and the sidewalks, when Clearview and Creek were redeveloped or redone, we were told by the city, because we were questioning the amount of green space that had to be there between the street and the sidewalk, because we said, why are you having so much green space there? <coughs> this is a collector street, and that's what's required for all collector streets. And any street that is put in the city of West Bend will require green space to be put in. This development has no green space there at all. The sidewalk is right up to the street. So when did that change? Or did they just tell us a story when, we, when they were redoing Creek and Clearview so that they could develop it the way the city wanted it developed? because it's a different story today than it was 10 years ago when they did Creek Clearview. So things can't just be changed on a whim to meet the needs of the city. You have to go with what you're telling your property owners when they're buying properties and things are zoned a certain way. And I'm sorry, the engineer, I forgot your name said these homes are going to be put in the same way as the existing homes are today. If you look at that plan and you count the number of houses that that plan covers, nine lots, maybe 10. 
and they're going to put 16 lots in that same size that there are nine lots today. That's not equivalent. Not in my book, it's not. Now, I didn't take a tape measure out and measure exactly the measurements because I'd be trespassing if I went on their property. But when I look at the size of those lots on Creek and the size of that drawing, it looks pretty much the same. But 9 versus 16, that's not the same math for me. So Mr. Laufer knew it was zoned RS4 when he bought it and he should develop it as RS4. And the other thing that I want to state is this plan that the previous developer had submitted addressed the water flow issue that's back there. And that plan took the water flow and, address, and, and had it flowing into the creek that runs back there. This plan that was submitted doesn't take it to the creek. So I have concerns that some of those properties to the east on Creek are going to have issues with water coming onto their property from the way this development is designed. And I don't think that's fair to those property owners either. It probably won't affect my property because I'm right on the corner. But it will affect other property owners. So that's all I have to say today, but I am requesting you continue to keep it zoned RS4. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment tonight? Please. I only have one line to make, and I can make it right from here. Uh, so. You know what, if you don't mind coming to the mic, because we've got cameras and things on. There's only one thing that I saw today, and it's, sure. it is like a dream sheet of nearly 100 of these back in there different parcels built after this one. It's just like, we'll see how it goes. I saw a sheet work on that. There's actually a layout of it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Sir. Hi, John Holzer, 1107 Clearview Drive. I agree with everything that everybody has said before me. Um, and with the lack of green space, open space, communal space, I don't think that plan actually meets the definition of a PUD because there are no communal areas. I'm also concerned that if you route all that water to an open air pond, I mean, this is Wisconsin, a bunch of stagnant water, that's just mosquito breeding grounds. That doesn't do anybody any good health-wise. And, you know, this is like a HOA situation, private road, narrow, but there's no green space. So what are they gonna do when it snows? Where does all the snow from that road go? Unless they just plow it all down to the end and leave it there in giant mounds. Mounds of snow filled with dirt and salt from the days that's going to dissolve down at the end of that street. And where does all that meltwater go? So I have real concerns about how this would work. I think the non-parking is an issue because look in your own garages. Half that garage, you've got your snowblower, your lawnmower, your other stuff. Maybe you get one car in a two-car garage three bedroom homes, there's gonna be more cars and if they can't park on their street, they're gonna park on Clearview. And you know what? I don't think they're gonna walk all the way around to get to their home. They're gonna start cutting through people's yards. And I really don't want people cutting through my yards because of bad planning. So I would ask the Common Council to say no to rezoning this and leave it as RS4. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep.
Good evening, Doug Cravens, 2110 Creek Road. Um, in looking at this plan, I think that we're trying to put uh, 10 pounds of flour in a five pound bag. Um, where I live, one to the third lot down from Clearview, uh, this developer took a nice sized lot and split it in half so he could put two duplexes up. Now that whole street is zoned for that. But when he put the two duplexes up, you can't get the minimum size house on the lot. So he had to put in a two-story home. Now I've been in my house for almost 35 years. When I moved there, that was a pasture, and it was not a pasture, but a alfalfa field that was owned by the school district. All right, things happen, things change, I accepted that. The subdivision comes along. Well, I wasn't really in for it, but once I saw what was going on, that subdivision really turned out nice. But as the lots filled up, these, this last lot was available, split in two, two-story house, you should see the view from the back of my house now. Thank God 20 years ago, I put in arborvitaes that are now 15, 20 feet tall because it blocks out most of that two and a half story because the basement is half exposed. I look at vinyl siding. Then yeah, I can, I can de maybe deal with that after a time. The workmanship on that house was subpar. I look at a plumbing stack coming out of the roof that runs at about a 10, 15 degree angle. Come on, people. Let's have a little pride in our work. The other thing is, is that I fear for the children that are going to be in these homes. The people that live behind me in those two duplexes, they have about a 20, 25 foot backyard. The two little girls that live directly behind us do not play in their backyard because there's no room. You know where they play? On the side lot and in the front. That's an accident waiting to happen. So I think a lot more thought ought to be put into this so that we have some decent looking housing and keep it at the current zoning and go on from there. There was some nice plans that a lot of us thought would really be nice back there. But it seems like someone wants to keep changing that direction. That's about all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comment tonight on this topic? Move to close the open hearing. Actually, I'm sorry, could I just speak again quick? Is that okay? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Um, obviously, there's a lot of emotions involved here, so I'm just going to stick to just some technical things just based on the comments that were said. Um, so technically this is still remaining RS4 zoning. It would just have the PUD overlay, which is why the same density has to be maintained that is written in the RS4 code. Um, it, 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 Folks, it, th this is her time to speak, please. <laughs> um, I, I am just going off of the, the city's code um, for that. Um, when I talked about how there's, these are set up similar to the quantity of houses running along the south. Um, there are 14 lots that span the south lot line of this parcel, um, and only half of these houses you know, are along that same lot line, so that was all I meant by that comment. Um, I did hear some wetland concerns. Um, you know, the state and the county and the, well, City West Bend manages their own wetland um, or items pertaining to environmental concerns um, but there are very strict requirements for that so we would be doing nothing that would negatively impact any wetland here um, there are new house plans that um, the house plans have been revised to incorporate um, different stone facades and everything on these buildings as well to make them more architecturally pleasing um, this was initially presented as duplex, as a lot of these folks have mentioned. This is not the first time this has come to Planning Commission. Um, with maintaining that RS4 requirement, that's why these are coming back as the single family homes and 
the lot is remaining RS4 for zoning. Um, there is a covered porch on each of these houses. It's just within that 30 by 50 footprint in the back of it. Um, so they do already have that like outdoor seating incorporated with these buildings. Um, let me see. <laughs> Um, regarding drainage, all the drainage is directed to the east. Um, we're actually improving the drainage of the site too. Right now a lot of ponding happens on the south central portion of this property. Um, and the city would never approve anything um, if we were negatively impacting other properties with stormwater. I can attest to <laughs> the strictness of the stormwater requirements here <laughs> for good reason, of course. Um, and um, I, I guess just that, um, I mean, a, a wet pond is a um, standard practice for stormwater management, but um, I can't really um, say any more with that. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's all I had for addressing some of the comments there. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, absolutely. So that's what is, with the PUD overlay, that's where these flexibilities come in. So that's why they are technically allowed to have a sidewalk with no terrace between the sidewalk and the road. That's why this is technically, there aren't any more lot lines within this property. This is just one single lot as a private development and that's what the PUD allows. Okay, hang on just a second. We, we do need to have this run as a public hearing. And so we're gonna be addressing the plan commission. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate you very much. You, you're welcome to continue if you have, have more to say. Um, if not, the public hearing is still open if, there's, if there are other comments that uh, wanna be made. Absolutely, my apologies, thank you. No, you're fine, thank you. Please. No, it's more, oh, it's on that thing. sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's more of a question. And I'm, I'm trying to ask this as, as respectfully as possible. But for where I, and yeah, you're just doing your job, I get it. But from where I stand, right, you have the back of the lots of the folks that are along Creek. And then it goes to the start of Daisy Drive, right? In between their lots and the start of Daisy Drive, on my side, we have single family homes. Now looking at this map, now, I don't know if the scale's wrong or what, but looking at this map in the same section on their side, not the, on the opposite side of where I am versus where I live, you are fitting in two homes and a road. Am I reading this wrong? Honestly, because I could be wrong, but what I'm looking at the distance where we are single family homes with decent sized lots, this is the same amount of distance, but you have three things across where there's one on my side. I, I can answer that question. This has been submitted to us as an offset road. But it's still the same distance. Do you know what I mean? Like the road's still offset. So if you look at where Daisy Drive comes in and you look at where the lots are starting along Creek, you see where all of that is. If you turn, you know, what, 180 degrees and you look towards my house, it's single family homes with backyards. To me, this is looking like you're squeezing in the same amount of stuff in that same distance. Am I, I don't know, I could be reading it wrong. I'm not a developer. Okay, so that's I think where our frustration comes in when you say it's like the same as this and it's the same as that and it's the same settings. Well, not really. Because if you look towards my way, you're gonna see triple looking the other way. And if I'm wrong, please correct me, but that's just, that was my question and my concern because I don't like stating something that isn't quite matching what's, not re what's really not on the other side. So. I, I appreciate okay. uh, the public comments. If there are more public comments, uh, now is uh, certainly the time. You're certainly willing to address that if you'd like. Um. <laughs> So, I, I mean, you are, you are not wrong. Um, it, it is slightly larger because this lot line is, that north lot line there is a, about the center line of Daisy Drive where yours starts on the other side of your sidewalk. So about um, probably 30 feet or so more of width going that way. Um, but the, the way that it follows the same rules is just based on the density. 
So footprint of a house over the open area of the lot, essentially, is, is it how it follows the same rules. I guess then why do they want the pod? If it's going to be the same as all the RS4, that's where I'm getting so confused. If it keeps coming back to, oh, it's the same as this, same as that, then why do you want to change it? And you should just leave it as RS4. Thank Maybe you. No, I'm really done. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, again, I guess that's just where the PUD comes into play, where um, it needs to follow the density requirements, but with the PUD overlay, it does not have to follow the same, necessarily the same setback requirements and everything. I'm going to call for last last comments here, please. This is like saying, I have a duck, and I got this chicken here, and now it's going to be a duck. It doesn't work that way. RS4 is RS4. It does not meet RS4 requirements. RS4 has setbacks. RS4 has, as, as has property, uh, uh, foot, foot, uh, square footage. It's got all kinds of things that this does not mean. You're changing, it is not an RS4. It's a technicality that you can take to use to put something in if necessary. Again, there are no amenities, there's no green space, there's no places, common grounds. It's not benefiting us. And that's, it, a PUD is supposed to do all of those things. Where is that? I asked that before, where is that? Where is the open areas, joint, uh, communal open areas? Where is the, any green space? Where are the other amenities, and and uh, and how does it benefit us? It's not going to property values in that area are going. It's going to affect property values. That's not something that's compatible with what we have right now. RS4. You can build some RS4. Come up with a plan and build RS4. We welcome it. Go ahead, build that back there. We've always looked that that's what's going to happen, but now. Like I said, this is the second time we're back here for this developer trying to change it. No, do your homework, build on what you bought. Don't change it because that affects us and it benefits you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, ma'am, please. I just have one question and it's in regards to the street that's coming out because it's not coming out at the intersection of Daisy and Clearview. So is there any concern by the Planning Commission on safety requirements? Because you're not coming out at an intersection. You're going to have the intersection of Creek and Clearview. You're going to have Daisy up here. And then you have another street that's going to come out halfway between Daisy and, and Creek and Clearview. To me, that's not real safe because it was originally planned and built the way it's built now for it to be a true intersection by Daisy. And so this isn't congruent with that. Just another thing to think about and I don't know if you have any answers to that. Yep. Thank you. Short okay. Short. I will make it short. We'll take you up on that. Okay. <laughs> Scenario. We have a fire on the corner house just coming in. You shut down the whole street. Nobody can get out of there. They're locked in. There's no way out of there. That's my comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this directly affects me. I'm at 2322 Creek Road, and this is right in my backyard. I'm the eighth house from the corner. And uh, I, I don't really appreciate having, building a house 20 feet behind my garage. <laughs> There's just no room for it. If you, if you made normal size lots, I wouldn't object at all. But uh, this, there's no room back there, you know? I, I can see it. I've lived there 24 years, and this is ridiculous. You know, I, I, I. <laughs> that's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Why don't you make it again? I move to close the open hearing. Second. Thank you. There's a motion by Paul and a second by Mike to close the public hearing. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll move into discussion amongst the Planning Commission on this item. Uh, before we do that, thank you all very much for being here. Uh, this is part of the process. Um, a, a developer comes to our planning team with a proposal. We put it through its due diligence. It comes before plan commission. Um, obviously, uh, Paris Engineering, thank you for being here. As you mentioned, you're doing your job. And so uh, appreciate everybody being cordial about this. Obviously, this, this is uh, literally right in your neighborhood. And I appreciate the, uh, um, you know, the concerns and the, the respect that you have for, for your neighborhood. So um, the first action item tonight on the PUD, PUD overlay um, we are about to discuss, uh, potentially take action on, and this is actually a recommendation that then goes to the Common Council. And so um, just so you are all aware of that, whether it's approved, denied, deferred, whatever, it does go to the Common Council after that. So I'd like to open up discussion amongst the, uh, the Council, the Commission. Anybody like to start? I'll jump in, I guess. Jen, you want to go? I mean, no, go ahead. There's, there's a lot of thoughts on this one, and, and again, to, to echo the mayor, uh, thank you for your thoughts. Um, you know, um, I, I, I took a ride this morning after, after getting some emails yesterday on, on some concerns that uh, neighbors had, had sent in, and um, given the rain last night, I thought, well, if there's going to be, you know, water issues today would probably be the day to see it and uh, i don't know if the the young woman is is out there that i talked to this morning uh, but i went over about 7 30 and uh, saw standing water sitting down there and then walked up along creek to the end of the sidewalk and uh, you know saw a sump running non-stop actually got my got my phone out and started timing how long is it running and it was off about 30 seconds and it started running some more and um my personal read on this is I don't know that I'd build anything back there, give, given how low it is. Um, you know, if, 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 you look at the, if you look at the aerial of the whole parcel, sorry, and I realize... Paul, I'm sorry to interrupt. We, this is a, a public meeting of the plan commission being held in public. Uh, but at this point, if, if, if we could just refrain from any comments, applause, okay, that so, sort of thing. So I appreciate that. Go ahead. Paul. Okay, so... so the the elevation is an issue and and john or max i don't i'm assuming they'd be bringing in significant amounts of fill to to raise that yep okay uh, and and to max's earlier comment on having received the stormwater plan but but working on their comments now um personally i would like to wait on making a decision to see what what engineering's feedback is along with the revisions to the architectural design um, whether that's just a stone facade or if if they've gone to the extent of changing the profile on some of these to to bring a little more variety in um, but um, you know what i saw this morning concerned me and and um, i i i think going slow is is prudent um, at least for my own personal position on this john um, yeah, I've gone over and looked at it too, not after the rain, but I can imagine because I've been looking and watching the wetlands. Um, I, it is a lot in a small space, it seems like. And uh, the density, I mean, to me, the density would be fine if it was one side of the street. Um, you've got the Kate's argument with the two double side in the same depth of, as her lot. Um, but that's the idea with the PUD, I get that. Um, the green space was an issue I really hadn't thought of. Uh, snow plowing, what are they going to do with all that? Yeah, they're going to push that off on at a corner. It's going to be more wetlands. Um, I just, I, I agree with going slow on this. I think there's some questions we have. The stormwater is definitely an issue. I've heard that loud and clear from several people. And uh, it's being in my area, so I, I get it. And I think we need to work with it and see what we can do on it. Um, I do understand with Diamond Holdings that there's, there's going to be development back there. It, just what kind's the question? I'm not sure this is it. I, I share both of their concerns. Is your mic on, Scott? Thanks. I, I share both of their concerns, and, and I, I feel the same way about the. I think there's some nice PUDs in our community, and they have a place, but I'm not sure that this is the place for that. And, and so 
being it's already zoned to RS4, I don't know that it would make sense to change it to, to kind of cram this in there. I'm just not sure I follow that reasoning. Yeah, I share the same concerns too. And the parking also, it strikes me as they're not allowing street parking because of the narrowness of the road. Is that the issue there? Correct. Okay. Um, under the, the under the PUD and the private rule, we do allow a 24 foot wide pavement to pavement or curb to curb. Um, thus, the reason why we don't do the the parking. Got it. Um, Thank if you. they did a wider road with a parking lane, then that would be a different issue. Yeah, looking at the development, it looks like there's not a lot of room between driveway to driveway where the, you could have parking. Correct. We've had some developments more in our multifamily where they did provide parking, you know, off to the side for additional visitor parking. So that could be an option. There is a sim there is an area in West Bend where there's a <coughs> condo association that has just a small private road and I can tell you I own property in there and I can tell you that if you talk to any of the neighbors there they it's very frustrating to try and you know they have had to make rules for people to park in places but it's extremely tight and it's not none of them care for it at all yeah I understand the concerns with the uh, with the wetlands and everything too I know it does conform with the 4.9 units per acre so I mean, it's it, 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 they talked about the this fitting in there. Well, it is it does conform that way, but yeah, there are I concerned too. I'm concerned too with the wetlands, and and I know there's a lot of work that has to be done, and I assume that uh, the developers are going to do it, but uh, I, I would agree if we could go slow with this and find out have some plans before, then that would be fine with me. A question I have, and, and this would probably be for, for Jim, are there any other PUD overlays for single-family RS4 in the city of West Bend? We do. We have three other developments. And where are those located? One of them is actually just located east on the south side of, of uh, Creek. Um, I don't know if it's on the location map or not, but it's <coughs> the um, Wingate East and West. Um, okay. development that's all private I believe I looked it up I think it's 17 single families in there um, we do have two more out on the west side of town um, just north of uh, Paradise Drive up on Carriage and um, Silverbrook and also on Schlamer um, there one of them is a 8 unit and the other one is an 11 unit Thank you. Then <clears throat> I guess this is just more of a question, and Jim, you can tell me, is is that Daisy up there? Sorry. Yeah. So as I look at this map and I look at the this potential development going in, you're now taking a development that is going further north than current Daisy Drive or Road or Avenue is, which in my mind then limits our ability to extend that road to the east, which would be a natural extension in a continued development in that area. Um, so it seems a bit unnatural to me. Um, so that, that's more of a comment, and thank you for answering that. Um, the other question, and, and I did a little bit of research and talked to city staff about this, and it's my understanding that this is the same developer that was responsible for the Willow View Estate subdivision. Um, can somebody confirm that? Can you confirm that? No, the developer for Willow View Estates was a different developer. It was a different developer. Yep. Okay, correct. Then I, I guess my other comments and concerns, I, I think, echo many of what has already been stated in, in slow playing this and doing additional research into what it is they're looking to do. My concern is more from a philosophical standpoint. Um, and, I'll, it, and this is my opinion, and my opinion is that it's currently zoned for RS4, and one of the reasons for a PUD overlay, and as was stated, is it becomes a workaround for RS4 regulations. Um, as we continue to put up high-density developments, condos, apartments, larger facilities, and larger developments in the city of West Bend, the common complaint I see in here from around our community is why aren't we building more single-family homes? Um, part of that is, is we have limited RS4 available within the city. 
Um, I think it would be, in my opinion, not the best approach to take an area that is suited for RS4 and now create an environment of development that isn't truly aligned with what RS4 is intended to do and be. Um, so from that perspective, I'm, I'm not in favor of this. Um, and I think that's something that we all need to consider as we continue to move this forward through the process. Thank you. Can you pull up this picture? Sure. I'm not a fan of the offset road and, and Kate, I think, was, was kind of questioning that, and it, it is. I mean, it's, a, it's I call it offset because it doesn't line up with, with, the, uh, with Daisy there. And you're cramming a lot of homes into what is quite a small parcel. I don't like the fact that there's a sidewalk on one side of the road. I don't like the fact that the setbacks are so small and the homes are, I believe, 16 feet from one another. Um, I don't like the fact that the green space, you're literally going to have a driveway and a small block of grass and another driveway. I don't know if our garbage trucks can turn around. I mean, I'm just making a statement. I mean, maybe they can turn around in the cul-de-sac back there, but I worry about a fire truck, you know, getting in there and, and um, a, a private road like that, let's be honest, it's not going to get the policing that a public road would get. Um, and the other, the reason I wanted you to pull up this map is, is I don't know what the intentions of the developer are for the rest of this big parcel of land. And if we approve this overlay, then I think it kind of sets a precedent. It would still have to go through the process, but it kind of sets a precedent that the developer would want to add 10 more roads to the north. Um, I understand, you know, that we could defer this and ask the developer to come back with some answers to some of these questions. My problem is, is I don't know that they're ever going to come back with something that I like. <laughs> so um, I don't, my personal opinion is let's not delay this any more than maybe we have to because, and that's just where I stand, is that I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm never going to like 16 homes in that small parcel of land with an offset like I mentioned and a private road and a and a one side sidewalk I worry about law enforcement and fire and public works and and things so I'm leaning towards to to deny the PUD I like the fact that this is a nice big chunk of land that could have an extension off of Daisy to the east an extension to the north on the on the north south road and a, a nice neighborhood maybe with three or four cul-de-sacs going to the east with homes on decent sized lots and living close to the country and and that sort of thing so um, that's where i'm at on it i i don't really want to belabor the point and kick it off another month and ask for answers to questions that i know our city staff has asked questions of of the developer as you mentioned in your presentation that we haven't received answers for so that's where i stand i'd like to mo make a motion to deny the pud i'll second there's not a motion on the floor yet the, the, we had a motion close, to close, close the hearing but not a motion so so we have a motion on the floor uh, by matt to deny i'm second. a second is there any further discussion I just have one. So within the, the code, there is a basis of approval. So there's a series of findings that the planning commission is supposed to make. So I guess I guess for clarification, would you consider your motion basically a statement that it um, does not meet the basis of approval of 17.36 sub four? And I can pass out pass pass that along just to
So I ask then for a clarification as to whether, and, and John, hopefully you'll, you'll have an opinion on this, is that the proposed planned unit development overlay district is consistent in all respects of, of the purpose of this section and to the spirit and intent of this ordinance as established and is in conformity with the adopted master plan and or adopted component thereof. I would suggest that this does not maintain the spirit and intent of the current zoning, which is RS4, because it deviates from a number of different aspects that are necessary to be zoned RS4. And in that regard, I would say, correct, it does not meet that. 17.364, so basically a procedural thing here would be, there's a motion on the floor, it's been seconded. I've asked for clarification. Um, what would happen is you'd be amending your motion uh, to include what you just said. I can pass the per paperwork to the person who made the second. If they concurred, they could re-second your amendment and then you could go to vote. If you don't make me restate what I just said because it's been captured it on, on video, it's fine. Yeah, on record, it's yes, recorded, then I yeah. would amend my motion. Okay. So 17.364 is no undue constraint or burden will be imposed on public services and facilities such as fire and police protection street. It's this whole section. Oh, it's, it's oh, the, the whole, whole section. It's the whole yeah, section. Yeah, I was, okay. sorry, I was making reference to, I think he pulled just uh, sorry, something the whole section. lower, yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, I could tell you what I was referencing. It's the one. My reference was into 17.364A2, as I understand it. this one here oh yeah conformity with the adopted master plan I was speaking during my comment more about number four which is no undue constraint or burden will be imposed on public services and facilities such as fire and police protection street maintenance and maintenance of public areas by the proposed development but I understand your and, point and is that it's the whole section. And there's another part about architecture and other things, so that's why I just wanted to point the whole yeah. thing out. It kind of encapsulates a lot of things you discussed. Okay, so Matt, do you amend your motion uh, in accordance with 17.36 uh, section four, which, incorp which is the, the whole? Entire section. Yeah, so. it, it is, yes. Okay. Because it, in my opinion, does not meet all those. Okay. And I think we actually had a second for it, so I think we're at the point of a... And John, are you with your second? Okay, so there's a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? There's a motion and a second to deny the PUD overlay as proposed. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will now um, we, we cross out item number two and three on our agenda as those have to do with the uh, uh, approval of the PUD overlay had that happened. And we'll move on to our conditional use permits. This is another public hearing. And John, I'll have you introduce that topic, number B1 on our agenda. I have it right here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm just trying to think if you technically can skip over two and three. Um, I, I think you actually have to take some sort of action, whether... Okay. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for being here. Uh, I think you would... You could... Um, a motion to deny them, approve them. You could defer it and wait to see what city council action might be. Um, but you, I think we can't just skip over them. I think there needs to be some sort of I, 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 minimal action Correct, because that motion we just took of the denial is a recommendation to council. 
And so I think you would probably defer the other two items until the council meets. I mean, the site but, plan, if it if you find that it's not a, I mean, you can take action, a positive or negative on it, because it is a an action of the planning commission, or you can defer it. So I, I it, it's, we would need a motion, a yes, we need a motion to defer to the July meeting or or an approval or a denial. We need some sort of motion. Okay, let me read the... Uh, and I'll, I can read each of them and if, then you can... Please. Um, it, you could discuss and take action. So item number two is a request uh, site plan approval for a 16 unit single family planned uh, unit development located east of the intersection of Daisy Drive and Clearview Drive by Diamond Holdings, LLC. I'm gonna make a motion to deny. Second. So there's a motion to deny item number two, which is the site plan on this development. Uh, I made the motion, Matt made the second. Any comments, questions, discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. John, next item. Item number three on the agenda is a request for approval for a one lot certified survey map to create a single family lot for a planned uh, unit development located east of intersection of Daisy Drive and Clearview Drive by Diamond Holdings, LLC. Motion to deny. Second. There's a motion by Paul, a second by Matt on the certified survey map on this lot. Any comments, questions, discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Conditional use permits. Um, item B1 on our agenda this evening is a public hearing and a request for action for a conditional use permit to allow for the conversion of a two-family residential home to a single-family residential home in the RD2, the two-family residential district located at 933 Hickory Street. The application is by Matthew Schmidt. Thank you. Jim? Thank you. So under our zoning code, under the two-family zoning district, um, in order to convert or have a single-family house in a two-family district, uh, the plan commission needs to approve a conditional use permit to allow for that use of change. Um, in this case, the property owner owns the existing duplex um, and wishes to convert it over to a single-family house. Um, he provided some layout plans showing the, the conversion of that. Um, it's really more for architectural compatibility um, for the area to make sure that it's not being altered, that it's not fitting in the area. Um, in this case, this part of town, the house is surrounded by a mixture of both two-family and single-family uses. Um, the majority of them are single-family uses already. Um, so staff did not feel that this conversion would be an inappropriate um, conversion to the, to the house. Um, we sent out notice to everyone within 200 feet. Staff received no comments or inquiries in regarding to the, the change. So staff would recommend approval. Thank you. Is the applicant here and wishes to address? Please, if you wish to address the council or take the commission. I'm just here if you have any questions. Uh, otherwise, you stated everything well. Very good. I will open up the public hearing on this topic. If there's anybody who wishes to address the plan commission on this topic, now is your time. <laughs> we always thought that house was a single family home. There was a, there's an address on uh, 10th Street, but it's only been used as a single family home for, I don't know, maybe 30 years. So, yeah, for a very long time. So, and much discussion in the neighborhood. We're thrilled that it's a single family home and hope somebody moves in with children and will live there forever. So, it's awfully nice of a neighbor to come and speak <laughs> yeah. on that tonight. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address the commission tonight? I'll move to close public hearing. Thank second. You. Thank you, Mike, and a second by Paul. Motion to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries, and I will now entertain a motion on the item. Motion to approve. Second. Nice. Thank you, Jeff, and second by John. Any comments, questions, discussion on the motion to approve? Uh, Jim, just to confirm, uh, given your comments about um, you know the architectural element, this is interior changes only. Nothing exterior is happening. Correct. Okay. Correct. Any more comments, questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Move on to our next item, John. 
Item B2 on our agenda is to hold a public hearing and request action for a conditional use permit to allow for the construction of a new single family home in the RD2 two family residential district located on a vacant lot at 2500 or sorry uh, 2050 Willow Lane. Uh, the applicant is Dale Holberg. Jim. Thank you. So this request that we have a vacant lot in order to them for them to construct a single family home we have to approve the conditional use. Similar to the same process for the, um, for the conversion from a two family to a single family. Um, in this case, this happens to be a brand new construction. Um, the uh, applicant is requesting an exception which is allowed by code for a um, average street yard setback. Um, the average setback in that, along that block is about 11 and a half feet or so. Our code makes provisions that we allow the setbacks to be reduced to come more in line with that. Um, to a minimum of 15 feet. Um, staff does not um, disagree with that request or anything. It feels that it's appropriate so it fits in with the neighborhood um, for that. Uh, the building materials are going to be an LP smart siding along with a dimensional shingle roof. It fits in, in staff's opinion, with the rest of the area. Again, this is a mixture of one and two families in that area, in that zoning district also. Um, and staff feels that um, it would, you know, fit accordingly to this. Um, the one thing that staff did forget to put in the memo was that the parking, um, the code does require two parking stalls off for a, to be on site. Um, the applicant will is planning to put a garage up at a later date, but until that would happen, staff would recommend that the parking pad be provided off the alley or on site to provide that off site parking. Thank you, Jim. Is the applicant here on this item wishing to address the commission? Please. I'm here, uh, unless you have any questions, I really don't have anything to say. Uh, the reason, my intention was to build a duplex. I went to the site and I looked, and if you, if you look at the property, it's, I, it's been vacant for a long time. I've, the, the driveways of the neighboring houses come all the way to the property line. There's I mean, one is actually on my property. So I met the neighbors and standing there, I was like, I'm gonna be a terrible neighbor putting a two-story giant duplex here right next to them. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna scrap the plans, talk to Jim, can I build a single family and, and be the good neighbor? So that's, that's my story. <laughs> Appreciate that very much. Yes, please. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, so, um, I, I guess it's just a comment um, or a question based on the comments on the Plata survey. Um, it was requested that we show the um, houses on the neighboring lots on the Plata survey. Um, we, we do show the closest structures on the Plata survey, which are the garages, which yeah are, <laughs> are right there. <laughs> um, in order to survey the houses on the adjacent parcels, so they're actually on like the far side. I know they're small lots, but they are like on the far sides of the lots. So we would need to request permission from those property owners, obviously, to be on their property and, and, and get that information. So I guess I'm just asking, is it absolutely necessary for us to do that? Because we will, but I mean, legally, we can't just do that, which is why it's not shown on this current sure. plot survey. You, uh the part that I'm concerned with is that the code or the Plata survey requirements require the adjacent building elevations. Right, which is, we did put the garages, which are like the okay, most Okay, but I also, adjacent. what we need to determine is that, and if you can do it with spot shots or something along, we need to make sure that we're not going to drain and negatively impact those two neighboring houses. That's why that we have the requirement for the, showing the structures and the elevations. That, but we can, we can work with you to to get the needed information. Okay, great. That sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. The public hearing is now open on this item. Does anybody else wish to address the commission? Michael Kurtz, two thirty Willow Lane. I and my business partner are the owners of the property that's to the uh, east of that property, 256 Willow. Uh, so when you're talking about needing a survey, I give you permission to serve me. <laughs> thank, my property. thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I don't have an issue with uh, putting a single family home on there. It's going to be tight and I'd question if that lot would have, and it, we didn't hear how many square feet that house is, but uh, with a, a two car garage, I don't know if that lot would suppose, uh, uh, be the allowable amount of square footage on that lot with uh, the house and the um, garage. That's just one question, but that, that lot's been an eyesore for as long as I've lived there, 38 years, with overgrowing box elder trees and uh, weeds of all kinds. So I'm happy that it's gonna be used. The one issue I do have, and another one of my neighbors will comment on that as well, is the property uh, with uh, the parking. Uh, the property next to that 256, Willow, and I had the discussion with staff today, uh, has a fire hydrant right in the dead center of the property. So you've got 20 feet to the west, 20 feet to the east, uh, or 10 feet on either side that doesn't allow for parking by a fire hydrant. And then uh, I talked to staff, it's 18 feet from the fire hydrant to the driveway. Uh, well, 10 feet of that is gone or did I say 28? I hope I said 28. 28 feet from the fire hydrant to the driveway, 10 feet is gone, that gives you 18 feet additional. There is a city statute or a state, I'm not sure, John, which one it is, uh, a four foot away from the parking from a driveway entrance. So you could fit a 17 foot car or a 15 foot car in there and uh, Chevy Equinox is 15 feet, so gosh, it's within interest. But that's been, that's been the pro uh, problem on parking on Willow uh, since I've lived there, which has been 38 years. And right now I own three properties on that single block of Willow on either end, and my house happens to be in the middle. Uh, so we've actually used that vacant lot. Uh, thankfully, nobody parks there because there's not a house there. Uh, but now that there'd be a house there, uh, street parking is going to be a little bit of a problem and uh, if we could get some city help with figuring out how we could move the fire hydrant or figure out how to get a parking spot or two in there or possibly even allow for uh, double-sided parking uh, on both sides of Willow on both the north and the south side of Willow. Right now on the south side of Willow which is only um, three blocks long there is no residences facing Willow on the north side or on the south side of the lot. All the houses are on the south side. So I don't see a problem to make that uh, uh, two sided parking on that street. Want me to come in? If you'd like to. Sure. sure. So we did, staff did have the conversation about the fire hydrant. Um, the hydrant is a very expensive thing to move. Um, you know, it's been there for quite a while to put that cost onto this owner of building the house when the fire hydrant's not even in front of the property. It doesn't really seem justified. Uh, we did talk on the phone. It appears through using GIS that um, there's about 28 feet between the driveway and the fire hydrant. So doing some math, you can get certain vehicle sizes in there. My understanding is the tenant has been given warnings from the police department about parking in that general location. So we've talked about maybe having a conversation with the, um, actually going out and doing some actual measurements, having a conversation with the police department to actually see if, can you actually, if you park in the right spot, can you actually park there? Um, it might be a perception that it's too close rather than a reality or talking to public works about, you know, some way of indicating where that parking space might be. So I, I think there could be some resolution uh, to these concerns at a staff level if, getting the right um, individuals involved um, from that perspective. There might be reasons why not, but first glance, it seems like it's close, but possible. Um, the other benefit for the lot that's actually uh, um, being proposed is that they are proposing to access parking off of the alley, so they won't have an, a third driveway there. So that whole space um, between the two driveways on Willow will be, um, usable so i think you'd probably be able to fit two cars there so um a neighbor and maybe the the, the future owners of the empty lot could have a space too so um there's a flexibility we didn't talk about trying to make willow um 
have parking on both sides of the street, but that can also be a conversation we can have with the appropriate departments. I, I, I don't know the history of why there might be a good reason or it might just be that's the way it's been forever and no one's questioned it, so. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Kenny Aslan, 210 Willow Lane, Willow Lane excuse me. <clears throat> uh, so I agree with Mike's sentiments. And uh, when I suggested moving the hydrant, uh, I was more thinking that it was a long-term solution. At some point, Willow is gonna have to be redone. Uh, that road is deteriorating quite, uh, quite quickly. Uh, so at some point, if that fire hydrant can be moved, if it can be moved either around the corner onto Indiana or across the street onto the opposite corner, uh, just because again, we've got all working families families on Willow currently um, and with the upcoming loss of the parking lot on the corner of water and forest uh, my neighborhood gets parked up pretty good during events and everything like that there's there's people that are parking on Willow and going into downtown events which, which is great I love downtown I love all the events but at some point we're just gonna have to address that issue of the parking on Willow Thank you, Kenny. Any other public comments? Does the applicant wish to make any comments after that? That's okay if you don't. Move to close the public hearing. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, John. There's a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. We now need to act on this uh, conditional use uh, permit. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Jeff. Second by Mike. Any more comments, questions, discussion? Anything else from staff? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to our site plans. So that moves us, yes, on to the regular agenda. So the first item is A1, um, a request to site, for site plan approval for a 90 by 130 airplane hangar building located at 316 Ariel Drive um, over at the airport. Great, thank you. Jim? Thanks. So this is for a uh, new airport hangar, or a new airplane hangar. Um, it's a 90 by 30 hangar. Um, just to the west of the EAA um, chapter building. Um, the airport commission approved the lease lot and the um, layout for the hangar back in April of this year. And the common council approved the lease agreement um, back in May of this year. Um, adequate setbacks are being provided for the hangar. Um, municipal sewer and water does not exist. There was an error in the memo, but um, we do not have sewer or water um, out at the airport um, grounds. Um, so the owner is proposing to install a well and a um, holding tank um, to serve some facilities that he's constructing inside the building. Um, prior to them constructing any of that, they will need to get permits from our water utility for the well and then also get a permit from the county um, for the holding tank. Um, the building itself is going to be a, a metal metal building similar to all the other airport hangars out there. Um, it's gonna be a desert sand colored uh, metal panel on the upper two thirds of it. Uh, the lower portion is gonna be a darker bronze, so it's gonna be a two-toned um, building. And the roof is gonna be the same material as the majority of the, and same color as the majority of the um, metal building on the upper portion. Um, staff feels that it meets the requirements for this area um, for the um, airport hangars. Um, the grades themselves um, are very flat. Um, the, the contractor and the developer was able to um, get enough pitch to get positive drainage away from the building to um, and get the um, water to drain to various catch basins um, on that site in that area. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the site plan with the listed conditions. Thank you, Jim. Is there anybody here from the uh, applicant side or agent side wishing to address the commission? <coughs> Any comments, questions, discussion on this item? I'll make a motion to approve. Second by John. 
Final call for questions, comments, discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Next item, John. Our second site plan this evening uh, is for approval on exterior renovations and site improvements uh, located at 1539 North Main Street. The applicant is BK and Sale Properties, LLC. Jim. Uh, thank you. So this property um, is zoned B3, which is a neighborhood business district. Um, the site originally had some existing parking. The um, developer is looking to reconstruct it and reconfigure um, the parking on that um, southwest side of the building um, for three standard parkings and one barrier-free parking stall. Um, the site grades themselves aren't going to be changed much. Strange patterns are going to be maintained um, for the uh, for the renovations that are being proposed. Um, a sign is also being proposed on the um, southwest side of the building um, for the business. Um, a separate sign approval is going to be required for that um, and submission. Uh, the improvements themselves that are being uh, proposed is that they're looking at changing the siding and, and trim color for the commercial part. Um, the other part is actually a residential unit, so it's kind of a mixed use in there um, for that. Um, the L, uh, the south elevation, the windows that face Main Street are actually being removed and replaced with three smaller windows, um, which still you know meets the intent of what we have for for the code and then also um, appearance wise um, meets that requirement. They're also proposing to put a uh, raised patio um, area off of the door on the northeast side of the building along with a handicap ramp um, to provide access into there. Um, they're also doing a roll-up door on that same side that gain access to the patio and to the um, and to the building. Um, staff would recommend approval of the site plan with the one condition. Thank you Jim. If there's anyone here uh, applicant or agent wise wishing to address the Commission you're welcome to do so. Yeah please. My name is Bob Salinas. Um, basically, I've had the property for about three years now. Um, got put it on the back burner. I've been wanting to do something with it, but I didn't want to just turn it into a local pubery for the most part. I'm looking to make it more of a destination spot, um, something somebody wants to go to and see what it's like outside the beer garden, interior redevelopment, um, just novelty stuff that I picked up in my travels for the most part. Um, I want to make it a place that people want to go and see this, not just to have a beer. Um, for the most part, that development, I'm trying to get more towards the north side of West Bend. Um, I also own a business further down the street um, across from Elbio Burp Plumbing. Um, for the most part, I'm just trying to get more of a commercial development, uh, get people drawn to our area for the most part. I've been in Barton as a business owner probably for the past 15 years. Um, I'm just looking to do more in that area. So. Thank you. Looks very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Any comments, questions, discussion from the commission? I need to entertain a motion. Oh, motion to approve. I would second that. Thank you, Matt, and a second by Scott. Any further comments, questions, discussion? Thank you for investing in the Barton area, and it looks very, very nice. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. John. This evening we have a certified survey map for a two lot certified survey map located at 531, 675, and 801 East Washington Street um, by Washington County. This would be um, where the uh, um, um, Samaritan, home. Samaritan home is. Yes. Samaritan. Yep. yep. Any other comments on this one? No, essentially what the county is doing is they're creating the two lots to separate the juvenile detention facility from the Samaritan home and the rest of the county grounds um, for preparations of, you know, sale or, or leases um, for that. So on this map, the shaded, are we looking at the shaded area plus the little black I mean, you take, it's the whole building, yeah. correct? So okay. there, there are two existing parcels. That's why you have the two red lines and the, and the two the overall complex. So the shaded area with the, the stripe pattern is the actual certified survey map being proposed. Okay. Any 
Any questions, Matt? Just the one question I have is, is I know that the, the Samaritan has, has been sold, will be sold. In process. In the process of being sold. Does that include the fields assisted living as well? Or do we not know the answer to that question? I believe that's all on the same parcel. So yes. I believe okay. it would be gotcha. all it is okay. integrated in there. Sounds good. Thank you. And that property line is is not taking up any baseball field stuff, right, Matt? Nope, that is correct. <laughs> okay. I know you spend a lot of time down there. Any other comments, questions, discussion? Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jeff. Second. Thank you, Mike. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, this evening we have one extraterritorial cert certified survey map. This is a request for approval of two lot uh, extraterritorial certified survey map to redefine the existing home lot and farmstead lot located at 1707 and 1715 East Decor Road. Thank you, John. Any comments on this, Jim? Yeah, real brief. They're um, reconfiguring the lot one. It was actually a smaller lot. Um, they're actually making it a little bit deeper. Lot two is the existing farmstead that they're separating off from the rest of the actual farm land. Um, it's within our planning area and within our sewer service area. Um, and staff had no concerns with the with the uses that they have out there existing. Um, adequate right of way is provided for um, Decorah Road, um, along with uh, South Oak. Um, with South Oak, we're asking for a 17 foot right of way reservation, which is being provided. All the right of way stuff is consistent with the city's official map. So staff would recommend approval of the CSM. Okay, thank you. You're the only one left. If you'd wish to speak on this topic, it's it's all you. <laughs> I apologize. I've we've had a lot of speakers tonight, and I've forgotten your name. Oh, Mackenzie. Mackenzie. You know, you Thank are, you. you Mackenzie, are just take fine. it away. <laughs> um, so, um, no real comment, um, except they are looking to close on one of these parcels on um, the sixth. Um, so. I do have the CSM with me if everything goes well. I was wondering if I could steal your signature tonight. The Mr. mayor needs to sign that. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we can get the okay. mayor's signature <laughs> tonight. I'll be available. Tomorrow, we'll get, we'll get the clerks tomorrow then for you. Thank you very much. No problem. Boy, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments, questions, discussion? That's for another, day, another time. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Thank you, John. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Last item, John. Yes, our last item is a discussion and recommendation uh, to set a public hearing for a change to a recommended land use from multifamily to two family in the 2020 comprehensive plan for the city of West Bend for approximately 0.5 acres of land located at 1904 and 1914 River Drive. Uh, and it's being sponsored by the City of West Bend Community Development Department. Okay. Yeah. So we're asking the, the commission to um, consider a change in our land use plan. Um, the developer property owner has um, requested a, a change from the recommended land use that we have as multifamily to a two-family residential use. Um, a little bit of background on the, on the property is that there was a fire um, that occurred here. Um, it used to be a six unit building. Um, the fire destroyed the entire building. Um, the property owner or the property owners, um, you know, left the, and the property was sold. The new developer is looking to redevelop the property. Um, due to the significant challenges of the grades and the um, encroachments that are within this lot, there's a sanitary sewer interceptor that runs through the back portion of the lot. Um, large grade change, probably 20 feet or so um, there. Um, they're asking if we could change the, the land use and the zoning for the property from the multifamily to a two family. The area is surrounded by a variety of uses. You got single family to the west. Um, two family to the north, um, some multifamily also to the south. Um, but given the uses in this area and the restrictions and the and the um, the uh, the uses, um, staff wouldn't 
object to changing that land use or the zoning. Um, so if the zoning would change, we would change it from the RM4 um, to an RD2, two-family residential. Um, and so we're asking the commission to consider the proposal, and if you feel it would be appropriate, that we set a public hearing for August 6th at 6 p.m. Um, at the Planning Commission meeting. And then, again, with positive recommendation, we'd follow a second public hearing for the actual zoning for that. I would second that. Thank you, John. Second by Scott. And this, again, is to uh, set a future public hearing, which, uh, as Jim said, would be on August 6th at 6 o'clock p.m. Any comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. When is our next Planning Commission meeting? July? I believe it would be July 2nd. Second. Yes, right before the holiday. July 2nd, and obviously the week of a holiday, and so if you know that you're gonna be out of town and can't make it here, please let us know as soon as you can, um, just so that we can make sure that we have a quorum for that meeting. Um, you know, certainly enjoy the 4th of July holiday if you are gonna be out of town, and uh, yeah, but if you are in town and can, can be here, we'd, we'd definitely appreciate it, so. Any other questions, comments tonight? I appreciate everyone hanging in there and and uh like i told the crowd uh, before they left that's part of the process and that's what we're here for and uh appreciate you all listening to to everyone who spoke tonight and uh that's my only comment anybody else all right meeting adjourned thank you